Yeah, I don't really know how to think or feel. It's like a real like weird time. Of course, it's a time to be really proud to be English and proud to represent the Lionesses. And obviously to get to a World Cup final is unbelievable. But at the same time, to get so close, it's yeah, it's gutting. Yeah, what is the, the overriding kind of verdict for yourself? Because people will be very happy about you getting to the final, the first for any England team since 1966. Or do you still rue the way it went against Spain? Yeah, definitely. But we were beat by a better team. So mm. I think that kind of, yeah, it kind of makes it not OK, but it's a little bit, yeah, better um, because we knew that at, at the game itself was, they were the better team. And we tried to ride it out as much as we could. The second half, we were, yeah, we were putting them under a lot of pressure, but unfortunately we didn't score. So, yeah, it was a really proud feeling to come second. But, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm still young because another <laughs> World Cup could be on the cards. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Just 24. you got... An avalanche of support from over here. Did you get a sense of it? I know obviously the Euros last summer, you're right in the mix of it, but from Australia, the other side of the, the world, were you able to feel the excitement here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think sometimes when you're in your bubble and you're just focused on the games, you kind of don't really, you don't, you don't really know what's going on or how big it actually is. Um, and then after the games, when you see the numbers, the TV figures, the fact that, yeah, look at the crowd speak for themselves, everybody's going mad. And I think, yeah, we just, as a country, we just love football. Go back to the group stage, because you came into the, the World Cup, of course. You had uh, retirements, you had significant injuries, but then Kira Walsh went down against Denmark. How much did that impact the team, but specifically yourself and, and your role in midfield? Yeah, do you know what? Like, when a teammate goes down, no matter who it is, it's, yeah, it's a really difficult thing. And especially in the game when it is a knee injury and somebody goes down and they're in that much pain that they don't, really want, they don't want anyone near them. They can't even deal with the fact that the physios are around them. And it's, yeah, it's a really difficult place to be. And... I think the best thing that we did was we were able to ride out the rest of that game and we were able to get the result because when something like that does happen, it's, yeah, it's really difficult to overcome. And obviously, Kira's my best mate as well, so it's oh, really wow. difficult seeing your friend go down in that much pain. And, yeah, it's funny because she's more embarrassed about the fact that she was on the stretcher than she actually was <laughs> thinking about her knee. So, yeah, it sums up the type of person that she is. Yeah, good to see her back as well in the tournament. How do you reflect on England's performances at the World Cup? Maybe in contrast to the Euros, where it seemed more straightforward last summer. I think we really played ourselves into the tournament. Um, so as the games went on, we got better and better. And I think that's what's really important in a tournament um, because you don't want to go in and play all your cards in the first game. So we were able to hold it off and we faced situations that we'd never faced before and we were still able to get results. And I think that's massive. Um, and I also think the teams that didn't make it out of the group and the teams that went home early were the teams that you didn't really expect. Mm. So us as the Lionesses to be able to get them results and to be able to yeah, to get one nils here and there, it's massive and I think it's actually really impressive. And how well does that reflect on the sport of women's football and the fact that it is a global game now, performances of, of teams like Haiti and, and Nigeria? It's getting bigger and bigger. Um, it's getting so much more competitive um, and it's a World Cup, so you literally never know what's going to happen. Everybody, everybody comes out the blocks and everybody wants to show up. So I think that's the beauty of a World Cup is you genuinely don't know what to expect. What was it like with the, the Lauren James sending off against Nigeria? How did you re react as a team? How did you rally around her? I was gutted for her. Um, we've all been in that moment where the emotions get too much, the pressure gets too much. And yes, for that split second, it's a split second that you'll regret. Um, but I think for her, she's got so much potential. She's got, yeah, you can see the way that she plays, that she's going to make moves and she's going to be unbelievable in the future. And she is now. So I think it's just a learning experience and it's just something that she knows that she won't do again. And we were fortunate enough that we've got so much depth in our team and so much quality that we were able to get the two performances and get the two wins um, without her in the team. And then obviously she was back for the final, um, which was great. Um, but yeah, like I said, she's got so much talent and so much opportunity and just hopefully we can get everything out of her. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great to see her as a substitute in the final. What were your thoughts about the, the final, how it played out? You said Spain with a better team. I just wonder how difficult it was, particularly playing in midfield against a team that, that keeps the ball so well. Yeah, it's, it's so difficult. The last thing you want to do is stuck in a triangle when, the, <laughs> when Spain are playing it all around you. And I definitely got stuck in a, tri a few triangles in the first half. Um, but yeah, we struggled in the first half. We struggled to get pressure on the ball. Um, they overloaded us centrally and out wide and caused us mm. problems because we couldn't get our wing backs out to get pressure on the ball. And I think in the second half, when we changed that formation and we went back to a 4-3-3, three, three, we managed to get pressure on. We managed to get the ball up the pitch um, and we put them under some real pressure. And, 
like I said earlier, it was just unfortunate that we couldn't get a goal. Um, but that's Spain's quality. They can defend as well as pass. I suppose it shows as well that it seems like the Spain men's, boys, women, girls play the same way. Is that something that maybe England could look at? I don't know if there is a, a way to, to unify the style of play because it seems intuitive for Spain. Yeah, potentially. I think it also helps a lot that um, the Spanish players are at Barcelona, Real Madrid, um, the teams that do play tic tac of football and the teams that do play that kind of way. Um, I think the benefit and the real like quality, the fact that the Linus has got is the fact that we're from many different clubs that play many different ways and we're so adaptable. Um, we're so versatile in changing formation, in changing tactics, in changing whatever we want to do. And I think, yeah, that's just a real highlight of us and that we bring so many different playing styles, so many different personalities. Absolutely. Well, we heard throughout the tournament talking about personalities and, and, and stars, about your relationship with the former Manchester United winger, Luke Chadwick, acting as a, a mentor yeah. for you. How did that come about and, and what did you talk to him about? What's he been able to help you with? Yeah, honestly, the nicest man in the world. Um, you can see that he had a real journey in football. Um, he faced some things that, as a person and as a footballer, you don't ever want to face. Um, and basically, I was just having a real dip um, in life, in football, um, in my time at Manchester City. And it was a time that Luke had joined my agency and I just reached out to him. Um, he reached out to me as well. And we just kind of found a relationship where we can focus on targets, we can put aims together, we can speak weekly, we can go through games, we can go through life, we can set mm. targets in life. And that was something that I really needed. Um, and yeah, I've been with him for three, four years now, um, speak to him once, twice a week. Um, and honestly, it's the best thing for me because it just removes everything um, from football and I can go home and I can put football to the side. I can just talk to him about what's necessary and, yeah, whether it's life or football, he's there for me no matter what. Yeah, as you say, a very powerful story Luke Chabuk had as well and be very candid about some of the struggles he's had. So that's, that's great to hear. Now, Serena Wiegmann's already been linked with a number of other jobs in the women's and the men's game. How important is it for, for England to keep her? Oh, we need her. Um, yeah, we absolutely need her. She's done amazing in what she's done so far, even at the Netherlands and here as well, to be a female coach and obviously paving the way for, for female coaches. I think it's amazing. And to reach four finals in the last four major tournaments, yeah, it's, it's class. What do you make of that with Serena Wiegmann and Emma Hayes as, as well, that people talk about them going to the men's game? Is that complimentary to women's football or is it just frustrating as a female footballer that your best coaches might get cherry-picked potentially? Um, I think it's a bit of both. I think as female footballers, we don't want the female game to be the stepping stone for the men's game. Um, we want it to be football and we want people to enjoy the fact that, yeah, we play football, we enjoy it. And, and likewise for coaches, they enjoy coaching us and they're the ones that are getting us to the top. So, yeah, we're, we're not a stepping stone. Um, <laughs> we're trying our best to get women's ga the women's game on the, on the map as much as possible. And, yeah, we'll continue to break barriers and, yeah, see what we can do. Absolutely. Well, let's hope Serena Vigman stays for the foreseeable future as well. She says she will honour a, a contract. Do you feel... Like there'll be a big expectation around England after a Euros win and, and then a World Cup final. What's that going to be like dealing with that potentially? I think being English, there's a massive expectation and a massive pressure anyway. When you go into a, a major tournament or you're going into any fixture, England loves football. Um, so I think there's always that pressure and there's always going to be the positives and the negatives and there's always going to be the, the crowd supporting you no matter what. So I think whatever tournament you go to, there's, yeah, there's pressure being a lioness and pressure being... Yeah, part of the Free Lions. We love stats in the sports media, don't we? And participation numbers in the women's game soared after the, the Euros win. That's a, a big factor, isn't it? How does it feel to have that impact on girls, which I presume will, will go on after this as well? It's massive. Um, we want to try and create the biggest talent pool for the future. We want to inspire the next generation. We want to make sure that we've got top athletes coming through so that we can make the game as big as possible and the games change so it's obviously as the game's developing it's be getting more technical and it's getting more tactical and that's what we want we want to be able to challenge people we want to be able to yeah make the game as best as possible so that people enjoy watching us and yeah we can produce amazing things and like the tv views for um, the last game at the World Cup and throughout the World Cup was unbelievable. And if not, it's higher than some men's fixtures. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant viewing figures. New research as well saw that you saw, in terms of the modern media, the increase in social media numbers. That was the biggest of any team 
at the World Cup. What's your take on social media? Is it a positive thing, mixed? Depends how you use it. Well, how do you look at yeah, it? Yeah, what you just said, I think it depends how you use it. Um, I love it in a way to be able to connect with fans um, and I love it to be able to, yeah, just share my experiences and share what's going on in football and, yeah, share messages, share photos that I really enjoy. And, yeah, like a lot of the fans found it really disappointing the other day that we weren't able to go through the airport um, and so and see the fans through yeah, what, what the airport. What happened there? Because there was some um, sort of criticism, wasn't there? But there was yeah, a misunderstanding, was it? There was, obviously, we weren't aware of it and you just get off the plane, you get on the coach and you go. And later in the day, we saw messages saying that there was hundreds, thousands of fans waiting for us in the airport, which was absolutely unbelievable. So I think it's using social media to be able to thank them for turning up and yeah, making sure that they can get to a next game and we can connect to them, connect with them there and yeah, just kind of build them relationships. Absolutely. Now, it's uh, an interesting one, isn't it? WSL is going to be live on Sky Sports, of course. But it doesn't start till October, but you've got a tighter schedule. Bayern Munich coming up, defending the title. Uh, how, how long have you got and how are you feeling ahead of the new Bundesliga season? Um, well, I've not got long at all. Um, I'll be going back in next week. Um, we've got a first game on the 10th of September, which is in the Cup, and then the week after we'll be in the league. Um, so, yeah, we'll be trying to retain that Deutsche Meister um, <laughs> and, yeah, going for as many trophies as we can. We've got some real improvement to our squad and um, we've got some real, um, yeah, good signings this year. So I'm feeling What's positive. your conditioning like that? What are your le- well, how are your legs feeling? Do you need a rest? <laughs> okay? I can't feel them right now. So, <laughs> right. yeah, I think that's, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, yeah, when the adrenaline dies down and, when the flight dies down, um, yeah, I might have more emotions. You mentioned a difficult time at Manchester City. What's it been like playing in, in Germany? Do you know what? I've loved it. Um, I think it's one of the best things I ever did. Um, to venture out into an environment of the unknown and to go to a team where maybe the first, second English player to ever go. Um, and yeah, I think it's just so good to get out of your comfort zone. You can go to a new team, you can be whoever you want to be. Um, and yeah, I think I've developed my game massively, but I've also become such a, such a good person, as in like, obviously, I'm going to say that about myself. But <laughs> I mean, as in like, person, I've yeah. developed so much yeah. <laughs> as a person and as a player. And sometimes that's the best thing you can do is, yeah, just be more mature and <laughs> yeah. A leader. Have some fun as well. Wonderful experience <laughs> to, to be in another country. On that note, any advice for, for Harry Kane? I know you're in different training complexes, but about settling into Germany, you mentioned you might have the, the same German teacher. Could you have lessons together or you can maybe teach him? <laughs> um, yeah, I think we'll have the same German teacher, but I wish him the best of luck with the language because, <laughs> wow, I've been there for a year, year now and I'm waiting for that click. The German teacher keeps saying it'll click, it'll click, and I'm like year down the line and I'm nowhere near this click so yeah I wish him the best of luck and hopefully I'll be able to get down to the Allianz and watch some games. It's a good place Munich to be? Yeah it's very nice very nice the city's lovely the people are lovely um, yeah the German culture is so open and so welcoming and I'm sure he'll feel at home straight away.